Hey YouTube, Phil Bomart here. And uh, so I've got with me here is the Summer Solstice Scramma Sacks. And what I'd like to share with you today is some uh, video footage I have of me using this. Uh, and like I said, I was gonna use this as a uh, hunting knife. And uh, so that's what I did. I took a deer hunting with me. Uh, I was able to successfully harvest a deer this year. And so what I'm gonna do is, is show you some footage of this, of this knife in action. Now, uh, so you might consider it graphic footage, so this is kind of your warning. If you don't want to see this kind of stuff, don't watch it. Uh, but everything's kind of shot and edited in a what I find to be a tasteful manner, but you might disagree. Um, but for me, hunting is part of life. I eat what I kill, and for me, it's an important food source. And I mean, at the end of the day, this is what these knives uh, were intended for. So I ended up using this for uh, field dressing a white-tailed deer. I'll have some footage of that, and then I also use it to skin a woodchuck. I also want you guys to know that all the game that me and my family harvest are taken legally, uh, following all of the uh, game laws in our state. Okay, so enough rambling for my part. Um, let's see this. Uh, let's see this Viking Scramasax in action. So for our first victim, we have a venison heart. This is the heart from the deer that my uncle shot on opening day. Nice little buck. The first step is to cut off the ends, and it's a little tough going through here because uh, the heart was semi-frozen. I had it in the freezer for a little bit. Uh, it's not fully frozen, but that's why it's a little tougher going through it. So you discard that, and then you trim the kind of uh, the white bits around the meat. Just trim off that uh, that fat, and then you slice it up into basically little uh, steaks. You clean the coagulated blood out of the center, cut it up into little steaks, and uh, fry it up in the fry pan. And This is actually my first uh, time eating heart, and man, it was delicious. You don't eat venison heart you don't know what you're missing so the woodchuck was uh, on the farm that I hunt on the farmer hates these things because uh, they their dens and burrows tear up his fields uh, if a horse puts a foot in there you know it can break the leg and then you got to put the horse down uh, my grandfather actually stepped in a woodchuck hole and broke his leg uh, he made a full recovery though thank you for asking um, so in any case, the farmer's standing order is shoot woodchucks on sight, so that's what I did. And rather than just leave it out there for the coyotes, uh, I skinned it, tanned the hide into a, a, a usable pelt, and then I salvaged what, of the, what meat I could, and I'm gonna eat it, so. So for something a little less gory, here's a pizza box I'm slicing up. Um, cutting this up for kindling to get the forge going. So I ended up rendering the woodchuck fat into tallow, uh, and I've got that saved up with some uh, bacon grease and deer tallow that I'm gonna be quenching knives with. And so here's the deer that I killed. The first step in the field dressing process is removing the plumbing, as we like to say. Uh, if you imagine a buck has exterior plumbing, a doe would have interior plumbing if you catch my drift. So you can see I don't need a blade that big, but uh, something that large does come in useful. Also utilizing the point of the knife a little bit. So once that's removed, I made a cut up the center of the rib cage of the deer, cutting into the hides, opening that up so that I could get at the belly. There you go, perfect. So then you cut into the stomach wall 
so you can get at the internal organs, the guts, and remove all of that. So again, the knife is a little large for this type of thing, but that extra length of the blade gives me some extra leverage. So I tested a different knife for the skinning and a lot of the butchering process, but I did use the larger blade and the scramus axe for uh, butchering some of the meat, cutting it up into uh, steaks and so on and so forth. So overall the knife was comfortable to use, the handle felt good, blade worked well for me. It was a little tricky maneuvering that larger blade, but it worked well. So my takeaway on this blade is that I think I left the edge a little too thick, like the actual blade thickness itself near the edge is just too thick and it kind of came to a more abrupt edge. So I was able to get the knife sharp as you can see, it'll, it would cut, but it just didn't cut as well as something that kind of had a thinner profile. So, so that was a good uh, learning point for me, nice little takeaway from testing it out in the field like this. So obviously this is a fully functional knife, but the advantage to doing this kind of infield testing is I get to make improvements on future knives. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and until next time, be more Viking.